Okay, I'm so excited. We are recording. So this is Melody McFarland. I'm going to um, let her introduce herself because she's the most amazing story. I will tell you that she was the very first ambassador and it works. And I have been talking and talking and talking about her uh, with all of you guys on the team page. So I'm so excited that she's with us. This is like a really big deal. This has been a big dream for me to have you on. Our <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Wow. Yay. Okay. Pressure's on. <laughs> <laughs> so just take it away. We're all excited to learn from you. We've got our notepads out. We, we want to soak in and absorb as much wisdom as you can pass on to us. Okay. Well, Rachel, thank you so much. You know, I met you and Jeremy a couple of years ago now. Has it been two years yes. uh, since we were in Wyoming? I mean, yeah, um, almost two years. So, um, you know, we were just to so totally uh, blessed by you and Jeremy. And, you know, your leadership is bar none oh. right up there. I mean, you guys, those of you that are on their team, you know, I just have to say you have amazing leaders and they truly care for you. And, you know, it's important, I think, in any business that you are in, with leadership that you can trust and that you that, you know, cares for you. And y'all have that with um, Rachel and Jeremy. So, you know, mm -hmm. I find it, a, you know, it's a big honor for me to be on this call with y'all and um, or this Zoom or whatever, you know, we've come a long ways, let me tell you, um, since I got into this business, I've been in this for 11 and a half years, and we didn't have this type of thing, we didn't have the technology that you all have today, and, you know, it was a totally different ball game 11 and a half years ago when I got involved with It Works, and, you know, I will, you know, just go straight into some of my story because some of you know me, but then a lot of you don't know me. And I got started through a phone call. I got a phone call from a friend telling me she was going to a wrap party. And I thought she was talking about gift wrap and greeting cards. It, I didn't have a clue what she was talking about. And she said, no, it was a, it was a body wrap. And all I could think was how in the world were they going to wrap people? Where were they going to put everybody? You know, I knew it was at her office. They were doing it after hours at her office. And I, all I could imagine was people laying out on the floors all wrapped up like mummies and <laughs> you know, had no clue what they were um, doing. But she said, no, it's, it's something where you just put it like on your stomach or something. And it's only $20. And I was like, oh, well, don't get your hopes up. It's just water loss. And she said, well, for 20 bucks, I'm going to check it out. It's, you know, I'm not going to break the bank by doing that. So although I was skeptical, I was definitely intrigued. Mm -hmm. So I told her to, you know, let me know how it went. And she called me the next day and said she got great results. So I was like, yeah, but it's just water loss. And she's like, no, no, it really isn't. They explained it. It was longer lasting results. So I was like, yeah, but how? And she goes, oh, I don't know. They were just talking about it. It sounded good to me. I said, well, give me that girl's number. I'm calling her. So I called this girl named Kim and I said, hey, you don't know me, but my friend tried your, your rap and I want to know more about it. And she proceeded to tell me about the herbs and the cloth and all that. So I was like, okay. So I knew I had to go and get one. And I went and I drove 40 miles one way to go get a wrap. And I brought it back home and I called my friend Vicki and I said, hey, you need to come over here and put this thing on me because I don't know what to do with it. And you've already tried it, so you know, but don't say anything to Blair because I just don't want to hear it right now. And y'all have to know, prior to me getting introduced to this, Blair and I had been in network marketing for 15 years. We had never made any money. One company we were with for 10 years, and we never made any money there. And you can either say, well, that was stupid, or, wow, they must have had a good reason for hanging in there for 10 years and not making any money. And for us, we thought we had a good reason, and we, we did have a good reason. We believed in our dream. We were running for our dream, and we believed in our dream so strongly that we kept persevering through those 10 years without making any money. And, you know, we felt like God put us in that business. I truly believe he did. Because we learned a lot. 
We learned a lot about ourselves. We learned a lot about people skills. We were ex, uh, exposed to good books. Um, we gave our lives to Christ through that business. You know, we, there were a lot of good things that God had for us along the way. And it wasn't a waste of time. A waste of money, maybe, but not a waste of time. And, you know, it was, we are who we are today because of that experience that we had in that business for 10 years. And when you add, you know, the 11 and a half years plus the three little years that were in between that we didn't actually do network marketing, I actually did a pink cosmetic company between them and it works. Um, but because of all of that, I mean, when you add all that up, we're talking 25 plus years of chasing a dream. And people get upset when they haven't hit the big time in a year. They get upset when they haven't hit it in three months. You know, they get upset if they haven't done it in a week. And <laughs> it's just, it's just crazy to think that, you know, do you, you gotta, you gotta uh, really stop and think. All right, if, if I'm going to make a large amount of money and I'm going to be a leader of a lot of people, do you think that God's going to just drop it all in my lap and it just happen overnight? I don't think so. And I know that he has a plan and he, he, he just takes you step by step by step to learn this so that you can learn that. So then next time you learn this and you learn that. And as you keep going along, then he opens up more and more and more for you. Had I known way back then that I would be doing what I do today, I probably would have been um, self-sabotaging. I would have been so scared. I, you know, so God knew what he was doing. It was going to take a long time for me to get to the place that I needed to be in order to, you know, really build a huge business. So I don't regret those years and I'm, I am so thankful for them. But so I didn't want to hear it from Blair because I mean, like I said, at that point I was doing a very pink cosmetic company had been doing that for about two years. And I thought that was going to be how we were going to make our dreams come true. Um, Blair had gotten so, out of, of um, focus with his construction business during those first years when we were in network marketing that we weren't making any money. But I mean, he was, he was so believing in his dream that he didn't put his full focus on his construction business. You know, he let a lot of things kind of go to the wayside. And so after it was in 2003, after 13 years of being in network marketing for him, you know, he said, I'm done with network marketing. I am, you know, I, I, it's not working for us. And I'm going to put all my focus back on my construction business. It's the only way we're going to get our dreams. And you got to get a job or you got to do something. And at that point, I was unemployable because I had been self-employed and was used to it. So I said, okay, I'll do something. And that's when I found that pink cosmetic company. So that's what we were doing. That was our plan. We were going to continue to do that. And between the two of those, surely, somehow, some way, we were going to make it. And Blair's business was doing really, really well at that time. The, the building business was booming at that time. So that was 2005, 2006. But then we all know what happened at the, you know, towards the middle of 2007 and 2008. Thank God. I got into it works when I did because we would have probably lost our house. We would have lost everything, but thank God for it works because at that point I had already been into it works almost two years and we had enough money. I had built enough that he was able to retire when there was no more work for him. And you know, the housing industry went to just totally fell and especially in our area too. I mean, there was nothing nothing going on, no building going on. So I'm so thankful for this business. But, and you'll learn, Rachel, I'm all over the place. And I, if something pops in my head, I'm going to, I'm going to say it or I'll forget it. And I kind of fly by the seat of my pants. I always pray that I say the right things, but you know what? God just kind of takes what I think I want to say 
and he'll interject this and interject that. So y'all just got to hang with me, okay? <laughs> in and it's totally fine. You just go for it. Well, we're going to learn so much as you talk. So we're good. We're well, good. I just might be a little scattered over here and a little bit over there or whatever, but it'll all come together, hopefully. But anyhow, so I tried the wrap and it worked. Oh my goodness, did it work? And I got excited. Now, I wasn't looking for a business, you guys. I was totally thinking that my pink cosmetic company was where I was going to make my money. And I was a senior director in that, but I still wasn't making the money I thought I should be, but I got excited. So then I called Kim back and I went and got another wrap and brought it home. And um, I knew that if I could get it on Blair, that he was going to, um, you know, understand that I, why I was excited. I just knew that he would see that I really thought I had my hands on something. So I, I actually brought it home. I couldn't even wait for him to get through the door good. I mean, I didn't even let him put his lunchbox down or anything. I mean, I was just like, I'm so excited. I found something. I really think I'm onto something. And he goes, what are you talking about? And I said, I really want you to do something for me. And he's standing there all, you know, hot and sweaty and, and just in work clothes and everything. And he says, uh, Oh, well, what is it? What do you want? What are you doing? And I said, I want you to do this, this wrap. I want you to put this wrap on. And he just rolled his eyes and he said, I'm not doing that. And he turned around and walked off. And I just literally chased him around the house saying, no, listen to me. You got to listen to me. I'm really onto something here. This thing really works. Oh my goodness. I put it on and 45 minutes later, I had lost four and three quarters inches. I'm so excited. And he was like, what are you talking about? And so I finally convinced him that he needed to put one on and he did. And he got better results than I did. So he was like, wow, maybe you are onto something. And y'all, all I did was get excited. I was ignorance on fire. I was signing up distributors. I was signing up loyal customers. I actually was signing loyal customers that I thought were loyal customers, but they were actually distributors because my distributor had told me in order to become a, um, you know, a, a loyal customer, they had to pay a $35 fee plus get on an ADBB auto ship. And I was signing people up like that left and right. I mean, I went 72 wide. Y'all, I went 72 wide because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and I was signing these people up. There was an option to sign up as a basic distributor for $35. And they used to pay a $30 fast start with that. And the, the business builder kit was $299. And they used to pay... A hundred dollar fast start with that, but you didn't have to get customers. I mean, as soon as you sign somebody, boom, you made a hundred bucks, or if it was a thirty-five dollar distributor, you made thirty dollars. So I was getting checks in the mail, hundred and thirty, three ninety, you know, four hundred and eighty, you know, ninety dollars. I mean, things like that. I mean, thirty, 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 hundred, 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 thirty, thirty, thirty. And we got physical checks in the mail. They were just coming in. As soon as you did it, boom, they would send you checks at the end of the week. And so, I mean, I just didn't even know what I was doing. All I knew was that if I could get that wrap on somebody, they got excited. And they did one of three things. They either became a customer or they became a distributor or they did nothing. And I always figured out two out of three ain't bad, you know, just like that song, you know. And if you did, if the one that did nothing, if you followed up with them, they would usually do something. So I figured it out. How many people could I wrap? You know, just wrap, 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 wrap. And I made cash, y'all. I made so much cash wrapping. It was crazy. I mean, I had money just falling out of my purse. And I'm a blue personality, so I didn't have my purse closed. And, I mean, I still do that now. And my purse is wide open all the time. But, I mean, you could look in there and just see all these $20 bills. And it was the craziest thing ever. And one day I was just kind of laughing about it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, now I understand what they mean by laughing all the way to the bank. You know, I was just laughing all the way to the bank. And finally, Blair's like, quit putting that money in the bank. That's cash money. You just got to put that up. So I had to buy a safe to put it up. But I will tell you, I wrap people in parking lots. 
I wrapped them at Starbucks. I wrapped them at McDonald's. I wrapped them in service station bathrooms. I wrapped them at little vendor events. I wrapped them any and everywhere I could get a, a wrap on somebody, I would wrap them. And there was something about wrapping people, y'all, that was magical. It was magical because when that wrap is on somebody, they're going to either get a result or they're not, or they're going to bloat. And if you explain to them all those three things, they get excited and they hope they bloat, you know, if you explain it to them. So I think what happens today, especially through social media and all, people are not getting wrapped. They're not experiencing that wrap, which is so exciting. And because we as distributors who are building on social media have not really seen that wrap work, then you could be taken in and say, you know what, I really don't know if it does work or not. You know, for me, every time I wrapped somebody, I would be praying before I had a lot of confidence in it. I knew it worked for me. I knew it worked for Blair. I knew it worked for my friends. But did it work on everybody? And so what would happen is, is that I would be inside just, you know, so anxious for that wrap to work and thinking, oh, dear Lord, please let it work. Please let it work. Please let it work. And on the outside, I'm thinking, oh, you're going to love it. It works all the time. And, you know, I just had that, that uh, fear inside of me. And then whenever I would go to remeasure them and it worked, I would inside, I'd just be like, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And on the outside, I was going, see, I told you it would work. See, I told you. And they were just, I mean, people would go nuts over this wrap. And, you know, the company never told us that we could not measure. They just said that we can't talk about inch loss, especially in a public forum. You know, we can't talk about it on social media, can't talk about it from stage, but we can talk about it at our parties. You know, if somebody loses two inches, it, you can say that at your party when you're, you know, remeasuring somebody. And in fact, what I'm doing today is I'm not measuring them anymore. I mean, we had it down to a science. You know, you had to, you, we knew exactly where to put that measuring tape. We marked it on both sides, above and below the tape, on both sides. It was down to a science. I mean, we just knew what we were doing. And um, now I don't care about that. But what I want them to do is I'm going to hand the tape measure to them and tell them, go ahead and jot down a couple of measurements. Just take two measurements, you know, there somewhere on your stomach and bring that back with you to the wrap room before you come back there. That way you can keep it. That's for your benefit. And you know, when, when we go back to remeasure, they are excited because a, a photograph doesn't always show. You can't see a half inch gone in a photograph, but you can see it on the tape measure. And Dr. Don used to say, the tape measure doesn't lie. And so I believe that was why we were so successful when we were doing uh, parties or one-on-ones was because we actually let people put that wrap on and we explained to them what to expect. I mean, we had no marketing materials. We didn't have the videos. You know, we didn't have um, all the things that we have today. I mean, if we wanted a before and after picture, we would take it with a camera and send it off to be de developed and then we'd have to wait until we got it and we had the picture and we put it in a photo album and nobody suspected at all that it was photoshopped because we didn't have that type of technology i mean yes there was a, a program called photo photoshop i think it was but it was expensive and not just anybody could have that program and so you know our pictures were real and I think today that, that with all the technology on our phones and the filters and the, you know, the, you can fix it up and blur it here and smooth it out there, that people are skeptical. Even if, you know, if, if you're being honest with your pictures, they're still going to think that you've done something to them. And so, you know, I think people are kind of numb to the pictures. They, they don't believe it half the time. And I did um, a huge rap party a few months ago, and everybody that came, nobody had tried the wrap, but they all knew about it, and they had all seen it on social media, and when I asked them, why haven't you tried it, 
they said they didn't believe it, that they felt like the, picture, the pictures were photoshopped. So that was a big aha for me, you know, was they, I was going to make a believer out of them. And so what I did is I pulled one girl up and I said, okay, I'm going to wrap you. I'm going to show you this thing really works. And I had her take a couple of measurements and then I put the wrap on her in front of everybody. And then I proceeded to do my, my little bit. And when it was time to remeasure, she was blown away. She lost almost three inches over a couple of measurements and people saw it right away. As soon as we took the wrap off, they could see that her stretch marks had diminished. And when, I walked into that party. There was not a single wrap bought. Nobody had bought a wrap. But by the time I left, everybody had bought a wrap to take it home because they wanted to do it for themselves. You know, that product is phenomenal. And I think we lose sight of that. That is our sizzle product. Having been in network marketing for 15 years prior to this, everything we ever did, the products were just, eh, you know, we weren't excited about them. It was, you know, another different multivitamin or a different, um, you know, pill for this and a pill for that. Nothing exciting. Um, you know, the cosmetics weren't exciting. You know, it was nothing different. And what we have with the wrap, it is different. Nobody has what we have. And you got to learn yourself that this thing really works. And when you do that, you're going to be excited to share it. And, you know, today, um, you know, social media has been phenomenal. It has been phenomenal. What it did for our, for our business, what in just a couple of years' time, the company couldn't do in 10 years, what social media did in just two years. You know, when I, when I came on board, there were a handful of diamonds and maybe one or two double diamonds in the whole company. And the company was four years old. And, you know, it, it was slow, but we didn't know any different. You know, it was painfully slow, but we didn't know it. I mean, I was making money along the way because I had wrap cash and I made commissions because I had people buying the products, you know, and everybody loved our products. That was the one thing that I noticed that was different out of all the other places or, or companies that we had done, that we loved these products. And the other ones, pretty much some of the leadership and the other companies, they would stand up there and say, now this isn't the company themselves saying it because the company would never say that, but the, the leadership, the distributor force would say, who cares what the product is? Bury it in your backyard, throw it away, give it away, whatever. Just buy what you're supposed to buy and get everybody else doing the same thing and build your network. All about building your team. So we didn't care what the products were. And so that was what made the difference for me was I got so excited about the rats. And I just wanted to tell everybody about them. And my friends told their friends who told their friends and who told their friends and it just took off like crazy. And I signed up end of June 2005. By May 2007, I had made enough wrap cash that I bought me a brand new ES350 Lexus. Yeah, seriously, cash. I mean, cash, y'all. It was crazy. And I mean, I wrapped, oh, I just don't even know how many people I wrapped. I wish I had kept up with them. But, you know, I did expos, um, did women's shows, all of that stuff. And so there would be, at, at these women's shows and these expos that we did, I would wrap 40, 50 people a day at those shows. We, would, we wouldn't be able to go to the bathroom hardly. We would have people lined up waiting to be wrapped. Waiting, 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 because nobody had heard of it. Melody, I was going to pipe in here and tell you today, um, I met with a potential distributor of mine that I met in town, and she'd never heard of the rap, never heard anything like it before, was completely intrigued by it, and she has got her act together. Like, she's someone everybody would want on her team, you know, that kind of girl. Awesome. She was like, and she did mention, too, there's something that you said, and... 
it's so true. She just said that like something, a product like this and it being health and wellness, she's, she's a stay at home mom, but she was like, you know, health and wellness, it's the biggest industry out there, biggest income producing. I was like, yes, it is. <laughs> and she was like, so having a product like this, I could see it like blowing up. And I'm like, yep. It yeah. will, you know, yeah. anyways, I had to add that because it really is about the wrap and you're really focused on the wrap tonight. And I do think that you're right and that we've gotten away from it and we've just gotten into social media, but the, the, the people that you can impact the most is what you're saying is the people you can put the wrap on. Right. Yeah. Right. That's why you keep going. I had to share that. Yeah, no, there are more people like that too, Rachel. They're out there. We just think we, we get into this, this trap of thinking that just because everybody on social media has heard of it, which they haven't, but because of the constraints and the algorithms and all that kind of other kind of stuff that Facebook has imposed on people like us, you know, you're, people have just seen it. They've just seen it. So, um, but they, they don't even have a clue. It's just like that party that I did. None of them had ever tried it. So you've got to get yourself in a position where you can at least get it on them and let them try it. Now, I will say before you guys go booking all kinds of expos and everything, that today, that type of response is not the same. I mean, back then, like I said, four, three, four days in an expo like that, we would wrap 40, 50 people a day. And that doesn't happen today. In fact, we're lucky if we wrap two or three in a day. But we definitely still can generate interest. And today... Why do you uh, think that is? I just think they've heard of it. You know, they've heard of it. Or, you know, if I, if I knew exactly why the people don't wrap today like they did then, I, don't, I mean, I seriously really don't know. But I think it may be because, oh, yeah, those things don't work. Okay, that's what I was going to say. Do you think it's just that we need to put it on them and show them? Yeah. 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 And in fact, if you were going to do some type of a little expo like that, I would recommend that you each hour do a drawing and wrap somebody right there in front of everybody and pick a winner and have them come back in 45 minutes and have the crowd come back because you're going to draw another winner, you know, for the next hour. And I would, I would be wrapping some people in front of a crowd and let them see it. You'll draw crowds that way. And I mean, we, y'all wouldn't believe all the stuff we did. <laughs> I mean, we have, we used to ring a bell. We would have people just going like, what is going on over there? Because we'd have somebody come out and we'd say, woo, ding, 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 ding. So-and-so just lost three inches. Woo! <laughs> and, I mean, it was crazy. And we put them on a board. And we put Sally lost three inches on her, you know, on tummy in 45 minutes. Oh, that's so smart. Yeah. But you can't do that now. Darn. You know, but we, I mean, we did. And people would look at that board and they would be like, all those people got results. And we're like, yes. And as soon as they got a result, we wrote their name up there, that's you know, awesome. and it was just so much fun. And, you know, again, taking a picture is okay, but. Start measuring. I'm just going to tell you that. That's going to be one of the biggest tips I tell you. Start measuring or at least let them measure before you put the wrap on. Still take your pictures, but do the, do the measuring tape because I had a gal just recently. Um, I took her before picture on the front and on the side, and then I had her take two measurements, one at her belly button and then one a couple inches below that. And she jotted down her measurements. And so when we went back to take her wrap off, I took her before picture or her after picture and I showed it to her and I was looking at it myself and I'm like, doesn't look like she lost anything. I couldn't tell a difference. And so I gave it to her. I said, do you, can you tell a difference? And she looked at it and she goes, no, it don't look like it worked for me. I said, well, take your measurements. And she lost one inch on one measurement and a half inch on the other one. Yeah. So she lost an inch and a half. And you talk about going from disappointed to pure excitement. She was so excited. She thought, well, look at there. Look at that. I did lose. I did lose. And I'm like, where else are you going to go and lose an inch and a half in 45 minutes? Mm -hmm. You're not going to go to the spa and do that. I can promise you. 
And she's like, oh, girl, this is awesome. This is the most awesome thing ever. So she was so excited, and she signed up as a customer right then and there. You know, so <laughs> it's, it's just they got to see it, okay? They got to see the measuring. They got to see it. Mm -hmm. So along the way, has it always been easy for me? No. And I will tell you, I've had a lot of tragedy along the way. I've had a lot of things that happened uh, a lot of loss of loved ones uh, as I was, a, as I was promoting, you know, the company um, I became, let's see, I started in June, 2005 in September, 2005, I actually went, got into a depression. My youngest daughter had been killed in a car accident three years prior to that. And she was um, 21 at the time. And in September, September 2nd was her birthday. And so on September 2nd, 2005, um, she would have been 25 years old. And I just, I don't know, I just went into a depression. And I did nothing with my It Works business for six months. Nothing. And every day I, I kept getting on to myself saying, you're such an idiot. You finally found something that works, finally found something that makes money for you and you're not doing anything with it. And up to that point, I had about a hundred people in my downline and I was making, you know, pretty good checks. I was making about 15, $1,600 a month. And I did nothing for six months. And one day I was laying in bed. It was the middle of April and I was laying in bed and I was trying to decide whether or not I was going to get up and I heard this voice and I was awake. I know I was awake. There's no way you can tell me I was sleeping. I wasn't sleeping. I was wide awake, but I heard a voice and it said, do the Southern women show. And I sat up in the bed and I was like, God, was that you? I mean, did you just talk to me? Did you just tell me to do the Southern women show? You know, I mean, you kind of think if God's going to talk to you, he might say something more profound than that, you know, and I just couldn't figure out where that come from. I heard it. I heard it loud and clear. And about that time, one of my distributors called and she goes, you know, I was just sitting here thinking that Southern Women's Show is going to be coming up in about 10 days. What if we could get a booth there? And I went, oh, my gosh. Yes. I said, we need to get a booth. Now, nobody had ever done an expo in the company before ever we'd never done one i mean it was just never thought about it and so i called the southern women's show office and they told me well if you had called me yesterday i would have turned you down she said because the show's in a week she said but we just had a booth cancellation and i have one booth left and i was like ah i mean i i had chills i was like this is God's in this. He's doing something here. And, you know, it was phenomenal. I booked that show. I spent $850 that I didn't have. And I called Blair and I was like, oh my gosh, I hope you're okay with this. But I just spent $850. And then I called Pam Souter and I was like, I just booked a women's show. I have no idea what we're going to do. What are we going to do? And she was like, well, you can wrap people's chins. I mean, we never thought we could wrap somebody at the booth. I mean, it just never occurred to us. So uh, we were like, okay, we're going to wrap people's chins. So I went and got, now we had no branding. We weren't black, green, and bling then. We were purple, teal, and beige. And it was, the, it was gross. I mean, it was just awful. And so um, the, the, the Southern Women's Show that year had lime green carpet and so I had a black tablecloth and I went and got lime green um, ribbon with white polka dots and we were going to tie it up on top of people's heads. And then we put, we got these stickers that said, don't laugh at me. I'm losing inches now. And so we had people beginning to walk around with those silly things up on their head with the chin wrap. And it wasn't long before everybody was like, we want to wrap our stomach. Can't we wrap our stomach? I didn't even take saran wrap with me at all. I mean, we just didn't know about wrapping the stomachs at a show. So I sent some of the girls over to the convention center to the hotel and they came back with one of them great big industrial rolls of saran wrap. 
And we took that to the bathroom and we started taking people back and forth to the bathroom, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to the bathroom. It was the craziest thing ever. But what happened at that show was it took me from doing nothing to getting me back into the game again. But I found my spark there. And you're going to find a spark somewhere. I'm telling you guys, you're going to find a spark that's going to light a fire. But if you give up, you're never going to find that spark. So you just got to know there's a spark coming your way. But the, my spark was there. And she was in the booth right across from me. Her and her mother were working a booth. And by Saturday, with all these people coming over and getting wrapped, the mother came over and wrapped her chin. And she lost, of course. Well, then the daughter came over and she was so, I mean, just like red is all get out. I mean, red personality. And, and, and she was like, well, what you've got, everybody wants. And what I've got, nobody wants. I'm going to put this thing on my chin. And if it works, I'm getting in. And I was like, all right. Yeah. So we put it on her. Guess what? It worked. So she went back to her hotel room that night, signed up. And she was in Raleigh, North Carolina, and her name was Sharon. And Sharon had booked all these women's shows and all these shows all over the United States. And her and I hit the road, and we started building our business all over the United States. And one spark led to another spark led to another spark. And that was where, you know, why God had me do that show because my spark was there. And she went, that was end of April of 2006. By June, I went diamond, she went diamond. By September, I went double diamond, she went double diamond. I mean, we were building right along the way. And, you know, by January of 2007, nobody had gone triple diamond yet in the company. Now, y'all, the company was six years old. Six years old. Nobody had gone triple diamond. And Mark called all the diamonds and the doubles to come to Greensboro, North Carolina for a diamond and above meeting. There were seven of us in the company, seven y'all. And we came and we went to a steakhouse and we sat around a table and Mark was there. Um, Pam came. Uh, Rusty Lackey was there. I was there. My spark Sharon was there um, and a few other people. And Mark issued a challenge. The first person to go triple diamond is going to get an all expense paid trip to their choice, Cancun or, or um, Jamaica. And I was like, that's my trip. I punched Blair and I was like, that's my trip. We're doing this. I'm going triple diamond. And it was crazy. That was January, 2007. And I came out of that meeting. And that's when he introduced the cab bonuses. I mean, up until then we didn't have cab bonuses. And they were $50 up to 100 at Ambassador. And then we've got an array since then. Now they're 80 up to 150 But um, I just knew that that bonus was just going to explode our business. And I came home on fire, I mean, just wrapping people like crazy. And about two weeks later, I got devastating news that my sister was diagnosed with lung cancer. And uh, she didn't have long to live. And I told Blair, I, I need to spend time with my sister. And is, is that going to be all right with you? I'm going to get off the road because I was traveling a lot. I mean, all our kids were grown and everything. And there was just Blair and I at home. And I said, um, I just, I have to be with my sister. And so Blair, you know, said, you do whatever you need to do. Well, I went to my sister and I told her that I was going to take some time off from my business. And she was my biggest cheerleader. Uh, she was looking at getting into the business. She hadn't at that point, but she was a loyal customer of mine. But she was my biggest cheerleader. She totally believed in what I was doing. And when I sat down with her and I told her I was going to take some time off, she just looked at me and she's like, this isn't about you and I. She said, this is so much bigger. She said, don't you realize this is what you were born to do? God put you on this earth for what you're doing right now. And she's like, look at these people that's lives are being impacted. And you're, you think you're going to stay here with me? No way. And she literally pushed me out and said, you go build your business. And I, I mean, at that point, that's when I did have that aha moment that, wow, this isn't about me. 
And so I went to town. I mean, I really worked hard. And by the end of March, I went triple diamond and I was the company's first triple diamond. And my sister, I called her first. She's the very first one I called and she was so excited. And she was just like, she was like, I knew you could do it. I just knew you could do it. And y'all know it was one week later, she passed away. And that same week she died on Monday and we buried her on Wednesday and Thursday. It was already, it was the first week in April was the net was the Southern women's show. It would have been a whole year since I had been at that first Southern women's show and I had a booth there and I was at that Southern women's show. And because I knew that I had girls this time that were new, they didn't, you know, they had no idea what they were in for at that show. And so I had to be there. But then I kept hearing my sister saying, this is not about you and I. This is so much bigger than us. This is something that God has for you. And I truly believe that. I believe that everybody who stays in this business and who is called into this business, that it is a calling and that it is your purpose. And whether you realize it or not, God really has a big plan for you. If you'll just stay in there and just stay the course, he's going to use you to change other people's lives. And so, you know, that, that was really, really hard. And I, you know, I still have um, days where I, where I get depressed. I mean, you know, losing a daughter and then I lost my sister. Well, I'm making the run in October of the same year, 2007, and I'm going presidential. And the company didn't have a presidential either. And so it looked like I was going to be their first presidential. And then my dad died. And that was a little bit more understandable. I mean, he was 82 years old and he had been sick, but still, I was a daddy's girl. And we were having our very first conference in Tampa, Florida. The company was still up in Bradenton, I mean, um, Grand Rapids, and they hadn't moved to Bradenton yet. This was 2007, but they were having a conference in Tampa, Florida, and it was the first real conference that our company had. And because at that point, we had about three or 400 people that would come to that conference. <laughs> so, um, but anyhow, I was supposed to speak at that conference. And my dad died on Wednesday, and we buried him on Thursday in a um, grade side service because my mom said, you're going to Tampa. You're going to be in Tampa on Friday. And we were able to get that done, and I was in Tampa because, again, it wasn't about me, okay? It wasn't about me. And through the grace of God, he allowed me to be able to speak and do what I needed to do. And, you know, that was... Uh, October 2007 and it was two more years before I went ambassador and I was the company's first ambassador in October 2009 but again I had tragedy strike again as I was going ambassador in fact I had my presidential already she was done this was the 25th of October and everybody was in place. I already had my presidential. I had my two triples. I had my two doubles. Um, the one, what I lacked was one of the doubles needed some volume. She needed about 6,000 in volume. That's all I needed to go ambassador. And I didn't tell anybody what I needed. Okay, so this double didn't know that I needed her to be double again. And she had qualified double month after month after month after month. And for this month, her volume had fallen. And I didn't tell her I needed her to be at, at back up to double. And Blair and I, I had a, um, I was supposed to be in Puerto Rico. We were leaving on October the, the 30th. We were leaving because we had a show that was starting November 1st in Puerto Rico doing a hair show over there and Blair went with me and on the 25th of October I'm looking at my chart you know I'm looking to see what do I need what do I need and you know um, I had called the girl that was that was the double and I was just saying hey girl are you're it looks like you're you're um, just a little bit away from being double again are you looking at being double and so I didn't tell her I needed her and she was like 
I just don't know. That's, that's a lot. I just don't know if I'm going to do it or not. She said, but I'm kind of disappointed that it's the first month I haven't hit double. And, and since she had been double. And I said, well, if you need my help, you let me know. And right after I got off that call, my mom called and said that my nephew, my brother's only child, had died suddenly with pneumonia. He was 33 years old. And the same day, I got another call from my mom, and she said, you're not going to believe this, but your uncle passed away of a massive heart attack. And he was my favorite uncle in the world. It was my dad's brother. So two people that I love dearly died on the same day, on October the 25th, 2009. And at that point, I was like, oh, my gosh, what am I, what am I going to do? You know, I've got to be in Puerto Rico, and, you know, what are we going to do? And, you know, again, my mom said, we're going we're gonna to take care of it. My uncle was in Missouri. So we buried my nephew and got in the car, drove to Missouri, spent the night, buried my uncle, and then we were back the same day. And then I was on a plane the next day to go to um, Puerto Rico. And I was, at that point, I was really upset with God. And I thought, why is this, why is this happening? Why does this continue to happen, Lord? And I, I was just done. And my, um, uh, I actually, that was on October the 30th when we flew out of there. That was Blair's birthday. I didn't even wish him a happy birthday. I didn't even know where I was. I just didn't even know anything. And the next day on the 31st, I mean, we didn't, again, we didn't have internet service like we, like we're supposed to. I mean, it was just very, very primitive still. And, um, and I had actually forgotten my cell phone at home. So I was having my uh, friend that was staying with my dogs. She was going to ship my cell phone to me and um, overnight it to me. So I didn't know that I had a phone call from my double diamond. Uh, telling me that somehow, some way, she was going to get that that volume, that she would be double diamond before the night was out. And I didn't even know that. And sure enough, she did it. And I became ambassador. And I will tell you, that gal was my first spark. It was Sharon. It was Sharon. She did it. And I didn't even, I mean, I didn't even ask her to do it. But God just put it on her heart that she needed to get it done. And because I didn't even look at anything. I didn't even know if, I mean, at that point, I didn't think I was going to be ambassador. And I became ambassador. And I don't know, a few months later, in March of 2010, is when Cammie went ambassador. And then for two more years, there was not another ambassador in the company. It was just Cammie and I. You know, so what made the difference? It was social media. Social media started coming on strong by the end of 2011 and into 2012. Melody, how long did you say it took you to go ambassador? How many years? Four and a half years. Four and a half years. Mm -hmm. Four and a half years. And, you know, I look at myself and I go, you know what? I, I, I did finish high school, um, but I didn't have, you know, I was a... Uh, I just worked several different kinds of jobs and I was just a mom and, you know, I wasn't anybody that, I mean, I wasn't, I was so insecure y'all. I mean, so insecure. You have no idea. I always worried what people thought about me. I always felt like somebody else could be, was more eloquent, had, um, was just sharper, wittier, just had, you know, things just came out of their mouth. So awesome. And I'd be like, blah, 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 you know, and I always worried about what people thought. And if I could do it, y'all, y'all can do it. And I did it without any kind of social media. I mean, it was all face to face. But you know what? There was something magical about that. It was because of the relationships. You know, we didn't know about the charting that we did was people that we were charting with people and calling them and working with them and saying, what do you need? Where, what, you know, here's what you need. We didn't do what a lot of people have done, which is just methodically placing people in a box and then just hoping that somebody would stick. 
because that a lot of that went on. Okay. A lot of that went on. I mean, we worked with people who wanted to work. We didn't build anybody because that's not network marketing. You don't build people. You don't build their business for them. And so what started happening on social media was there were so many people coming in. I mean, it was like shooting fish in a barrel. You know, people were getting 40, 50 people in a month coming into their business. You had to do something with them. So that's where I guess we're, we'll just start putting them in the boxes and just start filling it in. And it, it created an atmosphere where people were building their whole business. They did it all. And they didn't have anybody who was building their business. And they were hoping to find people who would take the, take the, you know, take the gun and run with it. And, in, and when I built, people built their own businesses. They got their own customers. They got their own distributors. And I would help them and we would work with them. We'd teach them and train them. But, you know, in, for us, we didn't just build boxes. We had the boxes, but we had the mortar in between them was the relationships. You know, that, that was what was so special is that we built it through relationships. And it took a long time, but yet, you know, I've never lost a rank ever. When I went diamond, I never fell below diamond. Double, triple, presidential ambassador. I've never fallen below those. And I trained up a whole bunch of people that did the same thing, you know, and, and our business is still very strong. I mean, yes, we've taken a hit like everybody else. Yes, I've gotten into a funk like everybody else. I really have. This year especially, I've gotten into a funk. But I figured out what it was, y'all. I figured it out. It's the devil. I'm telling you, it's the devil. <laughs> because, and I'm just going to be real vulnerable here with you. After a conference this year, if anybody was in a position to go Black Diamond after Denise and everybody, it was me. I was very well poised to go Black Diamond. But when I got home, for whatever reason, I just couldn't work on my own personal business. I would get distracted. I would help everybody else on, you know, on teams that didn't even count for me for going Black Diamond. I was fine working with them, fine helping them, traveling to go help them, bringing people into to my home to do retreats for the teams that didn't, weren't, that weren't going to help me to go Black Diamond, you know, and which I'm fine with that because I'm going to do whatever I feel led to do. But for some reason, I wasn't able to focus on my 2.0 spot and do what I knew I needed to be doing in order to get to Black Diamond. And I just started asking God, what is going on? What is wrong with me? Why am I in this funk? What is wrong? What is going on? And after a lot of prayer, probably by the end of August, August, now almost the years, I mean, the, all the building months are gone and I've done squat personally. Um, and God just showed me through some quiet time that when I was going triple, my sister died. When I went presidential, my dad died. When I went ambassador, my nephew and my uncle both died. Who's going to die when I go black diamond? And that was what was subconsciously um, holding me back. And I do have, I have a brother who is suffering with MS, the one that lost his son and he's not doing well at all. And so I think there's that fear that something's going to happen to him. And, you know, and that was a real fear and I, thank God I realized it. So now I can fight it and speak life over my business instead of subconsciously speaking death over my business. But, you know, you got to figure it out what it is, what is holding you back. There is always going to be something that holds you back. And you may not know it on a conscious level. It may be on a very subconscious level. But if you seek the Lord and keep asking him, what is it? What is it? What is it? He will show you somehow, some way he'll show you. And, you know, so 
you know, that's what you have to figure out. What is holding you back? What's keeping you from achieving all that God has meant for you to achieve? You know, is it fear? Is it, is it lack of, of confidence in yourself? You know, I love, we had a, a call with Mark the other day and he made an analogy that was just so good. I mean, like I said, had I known back then when I was first building this business that I would be where I am today and do what I do today and be in a, a position of responsibility that I'm in today, I would have been scared to death and I would have stopped myself because I just would have not, I wouldn't have pictured it. I wouldn't have seen it. And I feel like I have sneeze. Hang on. I thought I had to sneeze. Anyhow, I just would have been, I would have self-sabotaged. I know I would have because I would have been so afraid because where I was then is definitely not where I am today in my personal development, you know, and where I am today confidence-wise. But Mark made an analogy. He said that down on, on um, one of the highways there in Florida, there's a whole stretch there where there's just light after light after light after light traffic light and he said you know we would love for it all to be green you know we we just that's unrealistic i mean you can't just go barreling down through there expecting they're all going to be green somewhere along the way you're going to hit a red light and he said he felt like that was got that was an analogy that he could he could use to say that god's going to give you green lights but only when it's his time to give you the next green light you know, sometimes he stops us for a reason. He stops us so that we can, you know, we can't get ahead of God. Okay. So you keep, you keep going. You don't just stop. I mean, you stop for momentarily, but then you go again and you hope you get a green light. Okay. But you might get another red light and you might have to slow down and kind of take, take notice. What is it? You know? So, I mean, I thought that was really, really good. What he said. And then he also said, you either have to innovate or you will evaporate. And so right now, with the way things are in this business today, we got to innovate, especially for people who have been in social media, just building strictly on social media. They have, you know, it is necessary to innovate, do something different, get out from behind the computer. You know, just go out. What do I do today? What do, I'm still not one to build on social media. I never have been able to. Y'all, there were, there were times when they were, when Mark would have something going on or he would um, be given double fast starts or something. And I'm just begging for a customer to finish out, to help somebody where I can get a double fast start or something. And I, I mean, there would be times when I'd be so tempted to just ask one of my superstars on social media to just go, hey, will you just let me have one of your loyal customers and then I'll give you one, maybe a month. It might be two months before I get one, but I'll give them to you when I get back because I need to hit that deadline. I mean, people were just getting them just like that. I never had that. Never. And so, you know, I don't know what that feels like. I think the most I've ever done in a month might have been 10 distributors in a month or whatever. So, but what I have done is work with people and I interview people and I make sure that I, I work with people who are, who I want to be in my business, who I want to be in my business, especially as far as enrolling them. You know, I'm picky. I don't let just anybody come into my business. And I think with social media, we just let anybody come in and you know, our company has suffered for it, to be honest. And so, you know, you want somebody who has integrity, somebody who is a person of, uh, of their word, somebody who's honest, somebody who's fun to be around, you know? So interview people, be very selective. Don't just How do you do it. Like, what do you say? What are some of the techniques that you use to, you know, seal the deal with distributors or interview? Well, I want to make sure that they have a reason for doing this. I want to see how hungry they are. I want to find out how much time are they willing to put into it? You know, how many months are they willing to put into it before they start throwing in the towel? Are they willing to give it a year? 
you know, just because I get all the right answers doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to do all the right things. You know, I've got people that'll sign up after telling me everything the right, you know, and I'm like, okay, great. Yes, you're going to be awesome at this. And then they disappear. I have those two. But your odds are more in your favor if you can really establish why would they want to do this business? Otherwise, don't be afraid to tell them, you know what, I think maybe you should be a customer for now. Mm -hmm. And let them become a customer because some of our best distributors were customers first. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, don't be so anxious to just sign just anybody up. I mean, it's like if you go to a job, have you ever been on a job interview? You're there hoping that you say the right things to that interviewer so that he'll hire you and you have to fit the bill you have you've got to fit the job if you don't they're not going to hire you well you got to think about your business in that same way you know put a value on it if you let just anybody in you have devalued your business and i'm not talking about their social status in life i'm not talking about the way they look None of that matters. I don't care if they were off the street. If they're hungry and they've got, you know, they've got goals and dreams and, and they're willing to get out there and go to work and do it, I don't care what their background is, you know. So be selective. That's so Build good. your business with integrity. Build it through relationships. You've got to love on people. This whole thing goes really good when you build everything through love. Mm -hmm. It really does. That's so good. I just, you know, there's just, you, you just shared so much. <laughs> We've got pages full over here. I've got, I've got another girlfriend with me that, that does this. And, um, you know, we're just amazed by the things that you say because it's so true. And, you know, there's a lot of methods on how to teach. And honestly, I mean, I think that, you know, we, a lot of us were just taught to just, you know, make sure that you fill the box, make sure you're filling the box first and, and do that. But I love, you know, that you're talking about just build with the people who want this with you that are signing customers that are signing distributors, focus on those few people, because yeah. when you do, then your business will flourish and you said, it's like the brick and mortar. It's like, you know, it's like the glue that holds it together. Yeah. And uh, so you're not like losing rank because you're building with people who want this as much as you do. And yeah. you're teaching them to build with people who want it as much and they want it as much and they want it as much. So you've got layers of, yes. of like blue. Yes. Because you know? you've yeah. got really hard workers and they're not just filling space. Right. I really I like to equate it to the story of the three little pigs. Oh, you, so good. Remember the story of the three little yeah. pigs? You got the ones that built the, they built one built with straw and the other one built with sticks and one was building with bricks. And the one that built with straw and sticks, they're out there having a good time. They built their house, they built it fast and they're having a, a, the time of their life and they're out there enjoying life and they're buying this and buying that. And woo, look at me, I'm awesome. And they're just having a big time. And the one that's building with bricks is over there going, what is wrong with me? I'm doing something wrong. Oh, wow. And they're still just putting the mortar in and they're just slowly one brick at a time, putting it in and, you know, just thinking what in the world am I doing wrong? I'm doing something wrong. While the, the ones with the straw and the sticks, they're just having, living the good life, you know, but then when the bad, big, bad wolf comes and the storms of life come, it's going to blow down the house of the sticks and the straws. They're blown totally down. But no matter how hard and how huff puffing that wolf gets, he can't blow that brick house down. So who's, who's laughing now? You know, who the moral of the story is build your house with bricks, you know, and I hope that the ones that built with sticks and straw, the next time they go, you know what? All right. So we did it wrong the first time, but we're going to build it right this time. And they come in and they start building with the bricks. And the mortar is the relationships. It is falling in love with the people. Mm -hmm. And it's so worth it. You know, don't be so quick to, to get angry at somebody. You know, there's always two sides to every story. Don't be so quick to, to judge people. You know, um, just 
treat people like you would like to be treated and don't be so quick to, to anger. You know, just think about it for a minute before you respond. When people do things that upset you, just think for a minute and don't respond just so fast that you end up slamming a door on somebody that could have been your rock star. Mm. You know, so you just, you know, you just, if you do everything with integrity and love, you just can't go wrong. You really can't. And even I've got people with me that have been with me since day one and they've never gone past Ruby, but they are, they are good distributors. They show up to everything. And for whatever reason, they've just been marinating all this time, marinating, marinating, marinating. And I believe that when they're ready, when they're done, boom, they're going to go crazy with this and they're going to build and they're going to be what I need to go black diamond, you know? So, but had I not valued them and had I not loved on them, now I don't wait on them. Okay. I'm not waiting for these people, but I make sure that they're included in everything. And if they come to mind, I'll send a quick little message to them. Just let them know that I love them. And you know what? They stay year after year because of that. And they're growing. They're reading the books. And I'm going to tell you a good book to get if you had not already got it before we finish here. What to Say When You Talk to Yourself by Shad Helmstetter. What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. This is powerful. It's, you know, it takes... You know, the power of life and death is in the tongue. What you say is what you get. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what you say is powerful. The subconscious mind does not know the difference between the truth and a lie. And what you are consciously putting out there, whether you say nobody wants to get into this business or everybody wants to get into this business, the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference. And if you keep saying, Nobody wants to do this with me. Nobody is getting in. Nobody wants to be a distributor. Then guess what? Your subconscious mind says, aye, aye, Captain. No distributors? All right, we're going to cause you to make decisions that are repelling people. We're going to cause you to act in such a way that nobody wants to be in business with you. We're going to do whatever on a subconscious level. Oh and you'll keep okay. to repel people, right? Whereas if you're saying all the time, Everybody's getting in, whether they are or not. But I love people, and people are getting in. I'm a people magnet. They love my business. They want in. And they may not be coming in, but I'm saying that. I'm believing it. Then all the subconscious mind goes, aye, aye, Captain. And, that, and he'll cause you, the subconscious mind will, tell, will cause you to you know, talk to somebody that is supposed to get in your business or that's going to cause you to attract people. And this book, actually, it's, it tells you why that happens. It's not just if you say it, it's not name it and claim it. It's not that, okay? This is deeper than that. This book explains the science behind it. And it gives you story after story after story to back up what he's saying scientifically happens in the mind. It's so true. I was going to say, like, my mom always would teach us if you say, I am powerful, I am powerful, I am powerful, and you put your arm out, and you have somebody push it down, they can't. Yes. But if yes. you say, I am weak, I am weak, I am weak 10 times, everyone can just do it. Yes. Like, so easily. You can just push it down with one hand. So, like, your, your mind, like, literally has control of even the strength that you exhort. Yeah. 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 What I love, there's scripts in here. For anything from weight loss to confidence to uh, struggling with fear, whatever it is. And you could actually take some of these scripts and read them. And what I like to do is put them on my uh, voice recorder, you know, on your phone. And I made my own script. I took some the words out of one of these scripts on confidence and things like that. And then I added things to it. Like I am a people magnet. I'm a money magnet that... People love my products. They want my products. And, you know, all these things that I struggle with, I turn them into a positive statement. And so I recorded myself saying those things. And then in the morning, after I've had my devotions and my quiet time, I play that. 
and I hear it while I'm getting ready or getting dressed or whatever, and it's me talking to me, telling me these things. It's going into my subconscious mind. And then at night before you go to bed, if you do this, listen to it at night before you go to bed. You know, and it, it, it's, I mean, it's so... You're sleeping on it. Exactly. It's, I mean, it's so powerful to do that. I mean, I've got my uh, recording, and I just talk to myself. I'm going to start saying that I have a super fast metabolism. There you go. I'm telling you, it's Human so... Human Black Diamond. They've got it. They've got that in... I mean, you can, you can talk about your diet and about your health and your, you know, losing weight, whatever. Um, here we go. My self-talk. It's three minutes worth, you know? So when I listen to my self-talk, I'm telling myself, good stuff. I can do anything I believe I can do. I've got it, and every day I get more of it. I have talent, skills, and ability. I set goals, and I reach them. I know what I want out of life. I go after it, and I get it. People like me, and I feel good about myself. I have a sense of pride in who I am. See, I mean, I, I do that. that all the time. But that's part of the script, and then I just interjected my own stuff. So get this book. It is that's fabulous. So It'll change the way you think. I about. think we'll all be ordering it. There will be a surplus sale <laughs> tonight. <laughs> it's an old book. I've, ha I've had it for years. But it oh, is it's so good. good. Chad Helmstetter, he did such a good job explaining that. Because, you know, we always hear that, but there's really no explanation why. And he gives the explanation why. So well, it's an awesome book. Melody, thank you so much. You spent above and beyond what I could imagine with us. And I'm just so grateful for your patience and your time just sharing all that you did. I know that we're, we are all so blessed. And those who couldn't make it, they're so excited to watch the recording. So I'll make sure and get it up right away. Oh, <laughs> but well, thank you so much. Me. I hope I didn't just run off at the mouth. I just have a way of just, like I said. No, I it was wonderful. There. Over the you, place. You've endured so much. You've had to go through so much. And you know, you, you know what I was thinking when you were sharing some of those things was that you had the ability to say, you know what, I'm, you know, this is a, I, I must not be made to do this because all these bad things happen. When I do this, bad things happen. So I'm not meant to do it. And it's really just a, a scheme that the enemy has to detour you for the amazing plans that God really has for your life. And so I'm, so glad that you didn't believe any of the lies that the enemy was trying to just throw in your path um, and that you knew who made you and what your worth was in Christ and that that is what propelled you into the place that you are because you're changing so many people's lives across the globe and you're changing our lives too. So we thank you for tonight. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. It, I, I just... I just love y'all. You and Jeremy are amazing. And I can't wait to see you at conference. Okay. And I hope all of you have an awesome, awesome Christmas. And let's